Jubilee Line is one of the busiest lines on the London Underground, running from Stanmore in northwest London via the West End, the South Bank and the Docklands to Stratford in the East. It is also the newest line on the Underground Network, originally opening in 1979. The agency was added in 1990 and had been on the Metropolitan Line since the late 19th century and the Waterloo City had been run by British Rail since it was built in 1898. I've always been fascinated with the Jubilee Line and as a result I thought it would be good to make a history of the line. If this video gets popular, I may do it for, for the other lines. Note, if you want to go in a bit more in-depth with some of the things I talk about in this video, check out Jago Hazard's Jubilee Line playlist. Anyway, this is the story of the Jubilee Line. Our story begins in the years just after World War II, when London was in an effort of rebuilding itself. One of the problems faced by London was that the London Underground was becoming incredibly congested, and with only four deep-level tube lines serving the central area, it was becoming apparent that London needed a new tube. One of the proposals was a new north-south line that connected up with all the main line termini in London. This plan would eventually become the Victoria Line, which was a major, major project and took many years to build, with the first section between Walthamstow and Victoria being opened by the Queen in 1969, and it was eventually extended to Brixton in 1971. The next plan for London Transport was to construct a new east-west line to relieve pressure on the central line. This plan eventually became known as the Fleet Line because it would have run under Fleet Street. The plan was to take over the old Baker Loon Line alignment from Stanmore to Baker Street. Before then, the Stanmore section had been controlled by the Metropolitan Line. In 1939, all the stops between Baker Street and Stanmore became part of the Baker Loo Line, with new underground stations being built at Swiss Cottage and St John's Wood. The new line, after Baker Street, would then run to Bond Street, Green Park, and would temporarily terminate at Charing Cross. I'll get on to the future proposals later. Construction of the line began in 1971, and compared to the Victoria Line, it was a pretty simple job. They only had to dig an extra platform at Baker Street and dig three miles of tunnel to Charing Cross and construct three new stations. They would also have to combine the Bakerloo Line Trafalgar Square Station and the Northern Line Strand Station together to create the new Charing Cross Station, with the old one being renamed Embankment. During the construction process, it was decided to rename the line from the Fleet Line to the Jubilee Line in honour of the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977, which was the year the line was due to open. However, as with any rail project in London, the opening was pushed back. New rolling stock was what was ordered though, and it was the 1972 stock which now currently is worked on the Bakerloo line. Finally, on April the 30th, 1979, the Jubilee line was finally opened by Prince Charles. It's good news for London's commuter population. Stage one of the Jubilee line is opened by His Royal Highness Prince Charles. At a cost of £87 million, the new link runs from Baker Street to Charing Cross. Easily cleaned materials have been used on all services. It's a proud addition to London's underground railway system. Like a seasoned commuter, the Prince takes a ride, but unlike a regular, he rides up front in the driver's cab. One of the objects of the new Jubilee Link is to open up the northwestern suburbs with central London's business and shopping areas. The twin tunnels are two and three quarter miles long. At Charing Cross Station, terminus of the new section, the Jubilee Line, named to honour the Queen's 25-year reign, is opened officially. A plaque commemorating the event is unveiled. Work began on the Jubilee Line in the late autumn of 1971. The new underground stations were designed with a very 70s aesthetic, like the Victoria Line. Each new station had a different motif. Baker Street was red with Sherlock Holmes stories, Bond Street was blue with a gift image, Green Park was red with leaves, and Charing Cross was green with Nelson's Column. Also, the ticket hall of Charing Cross was given a very odd look. This has since been refurbished. Immediately after the first phase was approved, plans for the second phase of the line were being drawn out. The plan was to go from Charing Cross to Aldwych, where it would have connected with the Piccadilly line. It would then have carried on to Ludgate Circus and would then temporarily terminate at Fenchurch Street. The third phase of the plan was to have two proposed routes, the first of which would run on part of the old East London line to New Cross and New Cross Gate, and then on to Lewisham and probably all the way to Hayes. The other plan was to extend it into the derelict London docks, all the way to Thamesmead, with some stations in similar places to where they are now on the current extension. The second phase was initially approved and plans were drawn up, but due to lack of funding and the new Conservative government not really being a fan of railways ultimately meant that no progress was made. This meant the Jubilee line was rather odd and it seemed unfinished, and only six of its 15 stations were actually underground. 
1983, the Jubilee line got new trains that were the 1983 stock, which were very similar in operation to the D78 on the district line, as they also had single doors that were opened with passenger command. It was apparently implied that the trains would will be carrying us when we're all 35 years older, till the year 2020. But this is not the case. In 1981, the LDDDC was formed, with the goal of regenerating London's derelict docks. With the Jubilee Line plans suspended, a cheaper option was chosen instead as a transport solution. In 1987, the DLR was opened, running from Tower Gateway to Island Gardens and Stratford to Island Gardens. As the 1990s dawned, the Docklands were rapidly developing, and with the DLR struggling to cope, and it had to be extended to Bank in 1991 to connect with the underground, it soon became clear that a proper underground connection was needed. As a result, in 1992, the government finally approved plans to extend the Jubilee Line, but they, de they decided not to revive the 1970s plan to run to the north of the river or under Fleet Street. It was decided to run it south of the river due to it being poorly served by the tube. However, this would mean abandoning Charing Cross after only 20 years. The new route would require a new junction at Green Park, and if you look down the tunnel there today, you can see a straight tunnel, which leads to Charing Cross, and then the tunnel that curves up. That's the new extension. After Green Park, the trains would run to Westminster and connect with the Circle and District lines. This would require a complete rebuilding of the site and careful grouting to keep Big Ben stable. And as a result of this unstable ground, the new platforms were stacked one on top of the other. The next stop would be Waterloo, where it would connect with the Bakerloo and Northern lines, meaning that little inconvenience was caused with people using Charing Cross. The trains would then head to Southwark, where they would connect with the Waterloo East Station on the Dover Main Line. Then it would run to London Bridge, a new station at Bermondsey, then Canada Water with a brand new station on the East London Line connecting to it, then to Canary Wharf where they had to drag a massive dry dock in order to build the station, then to North Greenwich where it would serve the new Millennium Dome, then to Canning Town, a major interchange, then to West Ham on the South End Line and finally to Stratford on the East Anglia Main Line. Construction of the extension began in 1993 with a projected opening of 1998. Although less than a year into construction they suffered a small setback. A tunnel at Heathrow collapsed, and due to the tunnel structure being the same as the Jubilee line, they had to make sure it was safe, pausing construction. After that, construction progressed as normal, with a few more setbacks, but by 1997 it was well on track. It was decided that the 1983 stocks would be taken out of use, and new trains were ordered for the extension. These trains were the 1996 stock, which were very, very similar to the new 1995 stock being ordered for the Northern line. These trains were known for their famous engine sound. It was also decided that all the new underground train stations would have platform edge doors to help with safety. This made the 83 stock completely useless as it only had single doors, with the new 96 having double doors. But there were also problems with the new signalling system on the line, which was planned to have been controlled by computer. And as a result, installation was delayed and a normal signalling system was fitted. In 1998, the 1983 stock trains were retired and the 1996 stock took their place. Finally, on May 14th, 1999, over 20 years since the line was originally opened, the first section of the new extension was opened from Stratford to North Greenwich. Then, on September the 17th, trains began to run as far as Bermondsey. Then, a few weeks later, trains began running as far as Waterloo, with Southwark and London Bridge opening in the following weeks. Then, on November the 19th, trains stopped running through Charing Cross, although it is sometimes used as a siding today. Westminster Station finally opened on December the 22nd, 1999 less than 10 days before the new millennium. The Jubilee Line extension is well known for its iconic station inspired by the Hong Kong MTR, personal favourites being Westminster, Canary Wharf and North Greenwich. Since 1999, not much has happened on the Jubilee Line. In 2006, trains were expanded from having six cars to seven cars, and eventually in 2011, the new signalling system was finally installed, allowing trains to run automatically and between 2017 and 2019, all the trains were given a slight refurbishment, with the colour of the grad poles being changed from bright yellow to silver. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If this video gets very, very popular, then I may, may make more videos like this on the history of the other lines. Anyway, please like, subscribe, and take care.